Level C basically does not create desire because you're basically asking people to obey. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but the objective is to motivate young people to have the desire to do what you would like them to do. And the reason why I use the term level D, democracy, is very simple. Democracy and responsibility are inseparable. You cannot separate one from the other. As John F. Kennedy said, former president of the United States in this Pulitzer Prize winning book, Profiles of Courage, every one of us is in a position of responsibility. Even young people can teach kids who are res to be responsible. And I visited Finland that has some of the highest scores of any country in the world. And you'll notice what they do is they teach responsibility at a very, very young age. In contrast, what we do so often is we teach obedience and we wonder why the kids are not motivated to do what we would like them to do. Now, some people who are accustomed to rewarding kids may get the idea, well, I'm going to reward level D motivation. You can't. Level D is motivation. So let me share with you what motivation does when we reward young people. Later on, we'll talk about I don't have any problems with rewards as incentives or problems with uh, uh, acknowledgement, but I just don't reward kids for doing what I expect them to do. Here's how it works. Classic story. An elderly gentleman lived by himself on a corner lot. Every day a group of 10-year-old boys came around the corner and they saw a way to have fun. They would call him rude names and jeer him, be disrespectful. One day he saw them coming around the corner. He put down his garden tools, went up to them and said, you probably realize the reason why I'm out in my garden every afternoon is that I live alone and I'm really beginning to enjoy the attention you're giving me. Do it again tomorrow. I'll give each of you a dollar. Wow. Well, after school the next day, there were the boys, and sure enough, they started to call him rude comments and jeer him. True to his word, he pulled out a road of dollar bills, gave each one a dollar, and said, do it again tomorrow, and I'll give each of you a quarter. Well, sure enough, I mean, a quarter is a quarter. Next day, same situation came. They were tossing rude comments to him. He put down his garden tools, went after them, pulled out a roll of quarters, and gave each one a quarter. And said, do it again tomorrow. I'll give each of you a penny. Do you think the kids came back? You see what the sly guy did is he started to reward them for their behavior. And of course what happened is the kids assumed what they were doing was to get the reward. When the reward was gone, so were they. Point, remember this. Rewards change motivation. If you try to reward level D, you will never know if the kid is doing it to get the sticker or the reward, whatever it is, or because it's the right thing to do. Now, when you are, and when the kids understand the difference between level C and level D, shift changes. It literally changes their perspective. Now, let me emphasize something that's very important so you'll understand how the hierarchy works. Every one of us lives our lives in all these levels. For example, if you're angry at somebody, chances are you're not concerned about their feelings or the effect your anger has on them. If you ever went over a speed limit, you made your own rules of the road. Most of us, however, will operate on level C most of the time. But every so often, you'll have an opportunity to act on level D. Remember, level C is expected, level D is voluntary. Let me give you two examples. An adult contacted me, and she says, Marv, I've got to tell you what happened today. I went to my car after shopping, and I realized when I got to the car, I had a lime in my hand, which I forgot to pay for. 
She says, no way did she want to go back to the cashier, but she did. She knew it was the right thing to do. And so she went back to the market, went to the closest cashier, gave her a dime, which is what the lime cost, and apologized for, for walking out inadvertently with the lime. The cashier, of course, thanked her. And she wrote me, Marv, I cannot tell you the pleasure, that satisfaction I got doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. That's level D. Let me share with you how it works in the classroom. In a seminar, I'll have, of course, audience participation, and I'll take a chair and I'll put it on its side. And I'll create the situation as follows. You're all students in my classroom. Now remember, with every bit of cognition, there comes a feeling. So I ask you to pick up the chair. I tell you to please pick up the chair and put it where it belongs. Then I'll ask, how did you feel about doing this? I'll get some answers that are okay. You know, it was a nice thing to do. But most often, I'll get questions like, I didn't do it. <laughs> Why ask me? They will do it, but they don't have positive feelings about doing it. Different scenario. Again, there's a chair on its side, and you're all students in my classroom. But in this scenario, you are the first person who enters the classroom. I don't even see you come in, because I'm at the chalkboard or the whiteboard writing. You walk into the class, and you see a chair that's on its side. You pick it up and put it under the desk where it belongs. Then I ask, how did you feel? I have never gotten a negative answer. I'll get response like responsible, feeling good, the right thing to do. And this is the difference between level C and level D. As I mentioned, obedience does not create desire. We live our lives in level C. But every so often, you will have the opportunity to do something because it's the right thing to do without somebody telling you or without trying to impress somebody else. That feeling of self-satisfaction will never come to you through obedience. 